Thank you. And welcome to this exciting uh, session on technology trends adoption and the TOGAF standard. Before I begin, I would like to say the views which I am going to present are mine and do not represent the organization's position to which I belong. At the same time, the work with respect to this series guide is not entirely mine. I'm, I am an author, but the work is comprising of the contributions from various members who have worked tirelessly, the working group members of the technology trends. With this, let's start this session. So when we hear the term technology trends, there are various approaches which comes to my mind. I'm sure it also comes to your mind that how to look at these technology trends. One of the very prevalent method is to find and see some of these technologies which are there. For example, AI machine learning, self-supervised learning, the digital twin, low code, no code and automation of these things, blockchain as a service and customizable blockchain and zero trust in which open group is also contributing. So these are some of the technologies, but the way we look at it is capturing one technologies and working it around it in silos. They are not connected. We are just treat them in silos and that's the approach one here. We are catering to the business value, the business use case, technological use case, but these are treated in silos. So there is a better approach than this approach one, which is our approach two. Yeah. So when we say about approach two, it's about seeing these technologies as continuous and are connected with each other. When I say connected, it gives impetus that each of these technologies in a way complements the another technology. And that's when we capture the most value when we understand that yes, these technologies are complementing each other and when they are coming together in unison, that's where the business value or the business outcome, the organization's harvest is much more. But this is not enough. There is a different perspective when an enterprise architecture looks at it, which I'm going to tell in this session. This involves both inside out perspective as well as outside in perspective of seeing these technology trends. So the bigger question is how enterprise architect should look at technology trends. Well, there is an approach third wherein an enterprise architect is looking at a technology trends. So the first step, the foundation step is what we have discussed that is seeing technologies in a continuous way as a connected ecosystem and that's the plinth level of the foundation the foundational layer but there are other elements to it for instance there is these pillars individual market business and government for example let's drill down in into individual we have this customer centricity how the end user will incorporate this technology and play around it when we say about market it's the ethical implications of the technology being adopted by the organizations it also incorporates the competitive advantage which the technology would bring in the market ecosystem for that particular business coming to the third pillar which is business it involves the business use case, the technolo technology use case surrounding that particular technology the organization is trying to adopt. This pillar also incorporates some of the matrices, for instance, the IRR, the payback period of the technology once it's adopted, what would be the payback period for the organizations, what would be the return on investment of, you know, after investing on these technologies. So everything from the enterprise perspective comes into this pillar. Fourth pillar is where the outside in approach really plays a pivotal point. Here the government deals with regulation policy, 
compliance, security and governance, all these aspects coming together. Now, the pillars width, as you can see, can vary depending on the context. It could be the country. It could be different from different countries. For instance, some countries could be favoring an open market in which the market pillar is strengthened. Government doesn't disturb the market. It's a free market. Let the technology and the trends devise how the market plays. But in few countries, it could be the other way around where the government wants to control everything with a hard and fast rule and regulations which are, you know, uh, which are not that market friendly. In such cases, it's very imperative to see how the government is playing, how the market is dealing and all these four pillars plays a pivotal role. Then comes the integration with the TOGAF standard, the ADM cycle, enterprise continuum and all those other frameworks with TOGAF talk about. I know enterprise architects, our viewers is well aware about this horizontal layer. But there is one more layer, which is our upcoming series guide. This is about readiness assessment of the organizations and roadmap development when we are saying about adopting any new digital technology. This is done by leveraging the new upcoming series guide on digital technology adoption. We will drill down into this series guide in later section of the presentation. So just to give a recap, the insights on tech trends are really important. The 360 degree holistic consideration is really important when we are saying about a EA perspective in this digital era. Third, navigating the adoption of these technologies plays a pivotal role. Let's drill down further. So what is the reading between the lines? The rate of technology disruption, which is happening right now is a bit high and the need for technology refresh is ubiquitous. Every organizations agree that the new technologies are coming in the market and they are trying to adopt whatever comes in the market as soon as possible, just to have that competitive advantage. Enterprise are democratizing newer technology trends. It means now it's, it's not, not anymore related to one captive unit, but every business units, Every developers has the tools to play over here. The cloud, as we know, has really helped enable adoption of technologies very quickly. Now it's it's in everyone's hand. They just need to go and use a leverage and conduct some proof of concepts around the new technologies. So that democratization to the lower half is happening and in entire enterprise. Lastly, is about the adoption of technology is becoming an organizational capability. So we know there is something called value streams of any process and there, there are business capabilities and we have already applied how these business capabilities mapped with each of these value stages. But over here, organizations are trying to evolve that how their business units are incorporating and adopting newer technologies. So those business units which are quicker to adopt the new technology trends are said to be much more organization capable and their, their capability is a bit higher. So it's, it's becoming as an organizational capability, this adoption of technology. Now, moving ahead. So when we say the new technology then, then the next question is how best to adopt it? Well, the solution or the roadmap is, is a bit confusing. Enterprise architects and other CIOs and CXOs feel perplex, unclear about the road ahead. Hence, the upcoming series guides has an approach which is technology agnostic as well as domain sector and industry agnostic. At the same time, it aids in the decision making with two very important ideas. Number one, digital tech readiness assessment, DTRA as we call it, and the roadmap and the adoption roadmap. 
which is a four step process we will drill down in to this in a later part now there is a shift in the focus with this series guides also caters to for instance the current literature talks about only the efficacy of technology but they are in silos number 2 the silos approach of seeing the technology trends number 3 is about a black box and the trust gaps which which these silos ap approach often leads the organizations to for instance the cios and the leadership are not aware which business unit is playing which with kind of technologies what is their main focus what is their core competencies there is a trust gap and hence there is a shift now this shift put impetus on this thrust area from a enterprise architect perspective how to adopt these technology trends so that it would be a holistic approach at the same time it will cater to these connected technologies which is often the multi technology environment and lastly all inclusive transparency and line of sight across the line of sight of the enterprise that's very important and that's really critical so this shift of focus is also being catered in the upcoming series guide now let's see the steps involved the four step process imagine yourself as the enterprise architect you have lots of technologies coming in the market how to go about it so the first approach is selecting the adoption approach well we have a framework in the series guide which is known as abcd framework where it a is avant garde b is big bang c is cohesive and d is discrete let's talk about big bang so there would be some organizations who want to go with full throttle which means all the business units entire organizations will be adopting some technology that's the big bang approach wherein there would be some uh, organizations who finds the avant garde approach would be much more suitable over here it means identifying some business units and then experimenting with the adoption in those business unit because that's a, a that's a scoop of the entire organizations and let's play how that scoop plays out so a business unit perspective or a smaller perspective uh, a smaller part of the organization perspective is stated in the avant garde similarly there is cohesive and discrete about building consensus and going slowly so the framework is there in the series guide which could be leveraged to select the adoption approach once you have selected the approach the next step is about conducting a dtra assessment digital technology readiness assessment now in the series guide we have identified 15 such factors which are really critical for any organization to adopt the technology so these fact 15 factors have been categorized into three parts foundational factors we have impact factors and we have sustaining factors foundational factors as the name suggests these are the most important factors which needs to be there for in any organizations to adopt these technology trends impact factors basically enhances and amplifies the adoption of the technology trend for the organization sustaining factors basically helps both to make the entire adoption much more sustainable in the long run so with this identification and categorization of factors there is a assessment which has been created it's a it, it's coming as a toolkit it's a seven scale likert scale uh, seven uh, likert scale uh, questionnaire which could be helped as a toolkit to assess the rate genius of the organization when it comes to digital technology so step 2 is to perform the dtra assessment with the factors foundational impact and sustaining factors keeping in mind after that we have the puzzles you know the jigsaw puzzles pieces broken down it's not complete they are all broken out so then the steps is to find the consequence of these missing factors 
there is an artifact in the series guides which states when whenever there are some factors which are missing what would be the consequence of those missing factors for example what if the ecosystem maturity of the technology is not there what would be the consequence of that missing factors what if the organization culture is too risk averse what would be the consequence of such missing factor so that's where this artifact would help the management to take and give proper attention to those factors and to mitigate those gaps so the fourth step after you have seen the missing pieces of the jigsaw puzzle is to fix those puzzle and let's make a building block a, a better organizations fixing those gaps and everything around it so that's the step 4 which is to address the shortcomings this will help mitigate risk by plugging the identified gaps once you have done then we can initiate the adoption of the new technology trends which are coming in the market this thing is a reiterative process because let's say you have chosen event garden with some business units and that's the cycle which is complete the next step would be to redo the circle with a new either with a new business unit selected or you can go with a big bang approach based on the context of the organization so that's why it's a reiterative process or iterative process overall so that's all from my side this series guide also has various other things for instance it comes with some case studies case contexts where in the better way would be to put yourself in the shoe of the protagonist and see how best to use those factors and how best to understand those factors and their implications it also has a link with the adm life cycle and how, which all factors could be mapped with the enterprise architecture adm life cycle so uh, or adm phases so these all things comes together makes this series guides really helpful i look forward to uh, having your feedback once the series guide is uh, published and how well you have utilized these factors and the assessment and the entire road map uh, for adopting uh, digital technologies in your organizations thank you so much